We begin today's show in North Dakota, with the ongoing standoff at Standing Rock, where thousands of Native Americans, representing more than 200 tribes from across the Americas, are resisting the construction of the $3.8 billion Dakota Access Pipeline, which is slated to carry oil from North Dakota's Bakken oil fields through South Dakota, Iowa and into Illinois. On Saturday, over a hundred people who call themselves protectors, not protesters, were arrested on a peaceful march after they were confronted by police in riot gear carrying assault rifles. They say police pepper sprayed them, then arrested them en masse. This is footage from the Sacred Stone camp. Organizers also say police discharged rubber bullets to shoot down drones the water protectors were using to document the police activity. In response to Saturday's protests, Morton County Sheriff Kyle Kirkmeyer said, quote, "...today's situation clearly illustrates what we've been saying for weeks, that this protest is not peaceful or lawful. This protest was intentionally coordinated and planned by agitators with a specific intent to engage in illegal activities," Kirkmeyer said. Those arrested face charges including riot, reckless endangerment, criminal trespass, assaulting an officer and resisting arrest. On Sunday, hundreds of water protectors erected a new frontline camp of several structures and teepees directly on the proposed path of the Dakota Access Pipeline. The new frontline camp is just to the east of North Dakota State Highway 1806, across from the site where, on September 3rd, over Labor Day week, Weekend, Dakota Access security guards unleash pepper spray and dogs against Native Americans trying to protect a sacred ground from destruction. The water protest protectors also erected three road blockades that stopped traffic for hours on Highway 1806 Saturday, to the north and south of the main resistance camp and along County Road 134. <clears throat> the group cited an 1851 treaty, which they say makes the entire area unceded sovereign land under the control of the Sioux. The blockades were dismantled late Sunday. For more, we're joined by two guests. Sashin Sisham is an activist and journalist with West Coast Women Warriors Media Cooperative. She was arrested Saturday, along with more than 100 water protectors and journalists, at a construction site for the Dakota Access Pipeline. And Tara Hauska, National Campaigns Director for Honor the Earth. She's Ojibwe from Kuchiching First Nation. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! OK, <clears throat> let's first go to Sashin. You were arrested Saturday. Can you take us through this day? What happened on Saturday? What happened on Saturday was completely uncalled for and out of, out of the realm of any understanding of people who exist in this world um, trying to do something good and right. Basically, we had comrades who were locked down that we were trying to reach. We were trying to stop the construction of the DAPA pipeline that day. And our objective was to go walk in ceremony and prayer and meet with them and to, to lift them up, to pray with for them as they were down. While we walked, we encountered uh, quite a few police. And basically, they had little ATVs where they were uh, like dune bodies. They were following us, and then more and more police cars came. We actually had to um, avoid them by running down a hill into a gully and crossing a small um, river to, to go and reach the work site. And at this point, there had been at least six to eight giant police cars and many officers on the opposite side of the fence from us. And so we kept walking so that we could go and, and, and meet our objective, be at this work site, and, and to, you know, really prevent the pipeline from being built on sacred ground on ancient burial sites where the ancestors are laying and should not be disturbed. 
Uh, at this point, there had been about two, maybe roughly 200 of us, and we're walking through the field with banners, singing. There was a lot of ceremony and uh, prayer songs. There was a lot of uh, smudging going on with um, people with sweet grass and sage and tobacco. And this police vehicle rolled up beside us and basically said, you're all trespassing, you're all under arrest. So we kept going because at this point we knew too important what we're doing. We can't be intimidated or fearful. Regardless of what they do to us, we must continue and do what we're going to do to protect the sacred water, protect the sacred grounds. So we kept walking. They kept massing more people of their, their cop right here. They had their lethal assault weapons holding them. And, you know, the rubber bullets, but as we know, rubber bullets can also be fatal. They had their batons out um, and were openly carrying around cans of uh, mace in a threatening manner. And they eventually, as we walked, cut open the fence to come at us. And they started yelling and, and running towards us and yelling and, and inducing fear in people. And we were trying to, to create a sense of, you know, um, organization where we were asking people, please stay calm, everybody group together. And at this point, they just started being snatch happy. They were just grabbing people out of pocket, just, you know, throwing them off to the side. They um, threw a young woman who was trying to protect a child in the march. They smacked her in the ribs with the baton and, you know, broke it. That's how forceful they were. Sashin, so how are you arrested? I was arrested. Um, basically, the cops tried to tell us to go, and I was arrested because we were walking away. So we said, okay, um, we're going to leave. You've asked us to leave. You told us we're trespassing. And so we all started walking away. And, and as we walked, the police came through to the front, and then they surrounded us at the back and created a circle. They kettled us in. And we were arrested for engaging in a riot and um, criminal trespass. How many people do you believe have been arrested so far? We see the estimates between 87 around there that the sheriff's office is saying to upwards of uh, CNN is reporting 127, the camps reporting 140. I'm going to go with the camps estimate. While I was being processed uh, in the, we were all in the garage. They had no idea what to do with us. They were completely disorganized. The sheriff's office had us all penned up in the garage for roughly two hours, and there was upwards of more than a hundred people down there. What were you charged with? I was charged with criminal trespass and engaging in a riot at Dapp. Worksite 127. Were you ever brought to the Mandan jail? Yes. Yes, I was. And were you strip searched? Uh, yes, I was made to disrobe. Um, at this point, they were very disorganized, and I wasn't treated um, basically the way other women were. I wasn't forced to squat or cough. They just basically made me disrobe and then put my clothes back on. But, um, you know, at that point, Point, there was a lot of other women who shared their stories with me that they were strip searched, they were forced to squat, they were forced to cough and, and be treated in that manner. And how long were you held? I got to the jail, I would say roughly around maybe two in the afternoon, and I was released at 7 a.m. yesterday morning. Well, Sachin Seacham, I want to thank you for being with us. Um, Sachin is a member of the West Coast Women Warriors Media Cooperative. Um, she was arrested Saturday, uh, along with scores of other people, both protesters, or as they call themselves, protectors, as well as journalists at the construction site for the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota. When we come back, we'll speak to Tara Hauska about the overall plan. We called Dakota Access Pipeline, but weren't able to get them. On the plan right now is the pipeline accelerating construction. Uh, and then we'll speak with Shailene Woodley. Shailene Woodley, the
the actress who went to the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, protests. She was arrested. She was strip-searched, like so many others. Stay with us.